So method number one is to create a new object in the scene that will glow and cast light. The first step in this case is to create the neon tube that will surround the dancer. By the way, awesome jump here. I will create the new object using a very simple technique. So go and grab the ellipse tool. This will allow you to create a simple vector ellipse. And a small tip here is that while you're defining the ellipse, if you hold down the space bar, you can actually change its position, which is very cool. You'll also notice that a new layer will be created automatically on top of the background image, which is exactly what you want, to have all the elements on separate layers. The shape is created now, and all you have to do is to open the shape properties, choose no color for the fill, then click here on the stroke color, choose white, and also bring up the stroke size so the tube looks thick enough. Then with the layer selected, you can press Ctrl T and rotate the tube in a similar position with this one. Just take your time and find the best spot. Now double click the text on this layer and rename it to Neon Tube. This is just to keep the layers panel clean. I'm not sure if you feel the same, but when I keep my document clean and I'm able to find everything quickly when I have many layers, I just feel more comfortable. So after this, you will need to hide this part of the tube because it should be behind his body. The best way to do this is to add a layer mask to it. Now you can take the brush by pressing B, right click on the screen, make sure the hardness is at about 95%, resize the brush if needed, and then bring down the opacity of the tube layer. This will let you see the image underneath much easier. A very important thing that you need to do is to make sure that the foreground color is set to black because on a layer mask, black hides and white reveals. In my case, black is the background color. So I press X and now the foreground color is black. So I just switched these two. Select the mask, zoom in closely to this area. And now you can paint with the brush and hide these parts from his shirt, creating the illusion that the tube is going behind him. And now you can just make the brush bigger using the right bracket key and paint over this remaining area to hide all those parts. And you can then bring back the opacity of this layer to 100% because we finished this task and there you go. I want to mention that I downloaded this image from Envato Elements, a very affordable stock website for photos, videos, music, After Effects templates and much more. If you decide to sign up through my affiliation link, which is in the description, two things will happen. Number one, you can have unlimited downloads of stock assets and number two, I can earn some commission. And if you find some value here, this could be a good way to support my channel. Before starting to add glow effects to the tube, you will need to separate the subject, I mean the dancer, from the background on a new layer. Hide the tube layer for the moment. Choose whatever tool is more comfortable to you when creating a selection. I will choose the quick selection tool in this case. Make sure the image layer is selected and then click on select subject. Of course, this tool isn't perfect and you'll find areas that were left out, for example. So you can switch to the lasso tool and while holding shift, you can add to this existing selection. And also, if you see some parts that need to be excluded from the selection, hold down alt while using the lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool and readjust the selection until it's fine for you. Then you can enter the select and mask, grab the refine edge brush, and make sure you go along his hair contour just a bit to make the selection even better. You can also enter one for the smoothness and then output the result as a selection and press OK. When you feel confident about your selection, press Ctrl J to duplicate what you selected. Now you should have the subject, in this case the dancer, separated from the background on a completely new layer. The next step is to darken the image and let me explain why. When I turn on a new source of light in a room during daytime, the effect of this light on the surroundings and on my skin and clothes is not so visible. That's because there's a lot of natural light already entering the window and also I have another big softbox here that is much more powerful than this light. In order to see how your light is affecting other objects, the room should be darker. You can solve this by closing the blinds or the curtains or simply wait until the evening. And this is what we need to simulate here, more darkness. Also, I really want to know from you guys down in the comments, of course, if you like explanations like this or you just want to hear, hey, go there, click here, click OK, and so on. Because I tell you one thing, 
you will learn how to edit better if you understand the tools and the techniques properly. So leave me a comment below and tell me your perspective. Now, an easy way to darken the background is to add a levels adjustment layer. You can bring the slider more to the left and you'll see that the image becomes darker and darker. To add a blue tint, just select the blue channel from the drop down list and then push this middle point to the left until you start to see some bluish tones. So this is before and this is after we applied some darkness to the background. Now, we also need to darken the dancer in the same way. So I press Ctrl J to duplicate this layer and then move it above the dancer layer. Then I make sure I click here to clip the adjustment layer to the dancer because I only want to affect the dancer layer. If I'm not doing this, then it means I created two adjustment layers that will darken the background twice. This is not what I want. So every time you want certain adjustment layers to affect specific layers, you will need to clip them. And when you clip them, you'll see this small arrow here. So we have all that we need now to create a good glow effect because every element is independent. At this point, it's time to make the neon tube visible again and start adding the glow effect to it. But before we do this, if you liked the video until this point and you find some value in it, please make sure you hit the thumbs up. So the next step we're gonna do here is to right click the tube layer and choose blending options. From here, enable the color overlay, double click the color. Of course, you can play around with any color that you want for your image, but for this one, I'm gonna stick with this yellow. Make sure the blend mode is set to normal and now I'm gonna activate the inner glow. Set it to screen blend mode, opacity to 85 or so, choose white for the color, choose center for the source, Choke, zero. Range to about 80%. I keep the jitter at minimum. And then if you start to play with the size here, and for example, bring it to 15 pixels or so, you'll start to see a nice gradient on the tube, starting from white in the center to a more yellow color. And remember, you can play with all these settings. They could be a bit different depending on what is the resolution of your image or document, but these are the settings that I want to use in this particular case. Now let's create some nice light outside the shape of the tube. This will start to create that glow effect that you're looking for. And trust me, you'll love it. So enable the outer glow effect this time. Choose a more saturated yellow. That's more towards the orange, actually. You can use this code right here. Set the blend mode to screen. Opacity around 50%. Spread to zero range to 50% and for the size you can just start playing with it and see how the effect looks like. All we want to achieve here is a very soft and subtle glow effect. So for me in this case 50 pixels looks very good to me. And after you made all these changes you can check for a before and after. Just disable and enable the outer glow panel and you can see this beautiful result. But now let's take this a step further and I want to give you a very awesome tip. So, you know this panel here called Drop Shadow. We usually use it for shadows, right? Well, yes, that's correct. But this time I will also create glow with the Drop Shadow. So I'm going to use it to emphasize the existing glow effect. Let me explain. First, let's enable this Drop Shadow panel and then right from the start, I'm going to make sure the blend mode is set to normal and then change the color of the shadow to this orange color. You can see the code that I'm entering here. Let's set the opacity all the way to 100, distance to zero, the spread to zero as well, and now it's time to play with the size. From what I found while exercising for this tutorial, 120 pixels is the right spot for me. And if you feel the effect is a bit too much for you, you can always just lower the opacity, okay? But still, I'm going to keep it at the maximum value now. Even though we created this glow effect around the tube and it looks good, there are still some things that are missing and I'm going to show you what I mean, but let's see how we built this effect first. So we started by choosing a color for the tube, then we took care of the inner side of the tube using the inner glow. We added the glow effect with a much more saturated color and we spiced up everything by tweaking the drop shadow effect and turning it into a very soft, larger glow with a deeper and more vibrant orange. Now the question is, if this tube is glowing now and it looks fine, right? Are we finished with the first method? And the answer is not yet. 
because the tube should lighten up the clothes of the dancer and I'm gonna show you how to paint with light in a very simple way. So on top of the levels adjustment layer that's affecting the dancer, I will add a hue saturation adjustment layer and I'm gonna clip it to the layer below so that it will affect only the layer underneath. Let's take this colorized box, bring the saturation to the maximum, the lightness to about 65 or so, and then change the position of the hue slider to match the color of the tube and the glow. I found that 36 is very close to that, so now keep in mind that we're using this layer to paint with light, but in the same time, we want to affect mainly the brightest parts of the clothes. To make our job easier, let's right-click the hue saturation layer, enter the blending options, and we will focus on the underlying layer spot. To be more exact, I take this shadow slider and when I bring it to the right, you'll see that the darker areas from his clothes are starting to show up. And that means that this hue saturation layer is not affecting those areas, so they will be left out. To make this transition smoother, I hold down Alt and I can then split these two handles apart and you can see that everything looks much better now. So I can press OK. The next step is actually very cool. Select the mask of the hue saturation layer, take the brush tool, Make sure the foreground color is set to white, opacity is at 100, flow at 10. You can also right click on the canvas, set the hardness of the brush to 30, and I think we are good to go. Now, make sure that the layer here is selected and press Ctrl I to invert this layer mask to black, which means that the effect of the hue saturation layer is not visible at this point but we have a white brush so we can paint in a very controlled way with light. So because this tube goes all around his body, I need to paint light with the brush on the bottom part of his arms, on his shirt and pants as well. And for this step, please take your time, have some patience, think where the light is coming from and brush over the parts that need to be brightened up. If you made some mistakes while painting, simply press X to switch between black and white and go over the areas that are not right. Press X again to continue to paint with light and complete all the areas with patience. Use different sizes for the brush, change the flow if you need to, anything, but make it look as good as possible. Then you can make the brush much bigger and dab a few times in some of the areas to brighten them up just a bit more and make the light transition smooth. Now let's assume that this wall is close to the dancer we need to add some light there too, in this case, to make it look realistic. Hold down Alt and drag the hue saturation layer to make a duplicate and bring it above the levels adjustment layer that is affecting the background. You could also use Ctrl J to make a duplicate of the layer and bring it in the same position. So there are two different methods to do this. I usually use the Alt and drag the layer down. You can use Ctrl J if this is more comfortable to you. Select the mask, make sure the foreground color is black and then press Ctrl Backspace to fill the layer mask with black. Once again, this means that this layer is not visible yet. So take the brush again, make it quite big, adjust the flow to about 5% or so and paint some light on the background wall. And instantly, this looks even better, right? Now let me show you some bonus tips here to make this image look even better than this and then I will show you the second method to glow anything in Photoshop. So first tip, if you want to accentuate the bright parts on the dancer, select the hue saturation adjustment layer and press Ctrl J to make a duplicate. You can hold down Alt and click between these two layers to clip the duplicate to the layer underneath. Then you can bring down the opacity to 30% for example and this is how you do it. There's a big difference if you hide and unhide this layer. The second tip is to select all these layers here with shift, right click on one of them and choose convert to smart object. Now you can go to filter and choose camera raw filter. And this is where I love to spend time to tweak some settings. I'm gonna add some texture here. Then I'm gonna add some clarity as well because it looks good. And then I'm gonna go down to the color grading tab for the shadows and midtones. I'm gonna insert some blue color because it's a complementary color to the orange that we used for the neon tube. Then for the highlights, I will go towards the orange color. You can see how all these small tweaks make the image look very good in the end. And of course, just for fun, I will go down to the effects tab 
and add a bit of green and a small vignette to keep the viewer's focus in the center of the image where the action is happening in this case. Looking at it before and after, this looks really awesome. I really enjoyed the final result and I hope you like it too. Now let's talk about method number two to create glow in Photoshop. For method number one, we created a new object in the scene that generated light. Method number two is to use an existing object in the image and make it glow. A very good and fun example is to glow the horns of this bull using a method that's very different from what you've seen in this video. For this image, I created glow using a blur effect. But how is this possible? Click on this video next to learn method number two of how you can glow anything using Photoshop. I'm Christy, thank you so much for staying with me until this point and see you in this video.